Welcome to Employment Law Show. He is Lior Sanfiru. I'm John Scholes. Welcome to the show. If you've caught this before, well, you know it's ahead. A lot of employment law information, a lot of ways to contact and reach out to Lior and a member of the crew at the firm and get the information right off the hop before you make any serious life-changing, I literally mean that, life-changing decisions. You want to go ahead and do that, 1-855-821-5900. You can go to help at employmentlawyer.ca through email as well. Coming up on the show today, employment law, true or false? Now, normally, Lior, you like to turn the tables and ask me the questions, but that uh, always turns out to be a complete train wreck, so we're going to do it the other way. Since you're the lawyer, I'm going to ask you the questions. It'll make a lot more sense and make the show flow a little better. Plus, I don't look as silly, so we're going to do that in just a little bit. But the week that was is always the way we start, pal. What do you got for me? Uh, just before the show, we, we started filming. John begged me not to quiz him, so we're going oh, to we let John... Oh, we flipped a coin. You're yes. lying. We flipped a coin. <laughs> We're going to let John quiz me, and I have a feeling I'm going to get it all right. But Good. it's not really about me. It's about you know, educating you, and it's about making sure that you know the answers to these questions, that you know what your rights are, that you know what to do if you're faced with a workplace problem. That's why we are here, and that's what we do every week on the show. I know People call me and email me and say, you know what, I watch the show. I, I learned something new. I appreciate having that information. That's exactly why, why I want to be here every week doing this, because there are going to be things we're going to be talking about today I promise you that you didn't know you didn't realize and maybe even things that could be very impactful and meaningful to you uh, it's about your workplace right it's about your job your job security layoffs medical leaves of absence human rights discrimination bullying I can go on we cover all these topics on the show but of course if we don't cover it exactly the issue the, the, and the scenario that you're dealing with or maybe your your friend or spouse is dealing with not a problem. We only have 30 minutes. Reach out to me at any time. We'll give you that contact information. You can email, you can call, and let's talk about that specific issue so that we can resolve that problem. There's no point telling you about the law if the law doesn't actually help you. Well, the law does. There's legal solutions to your problems. There's legal recourse that's available to you, and usually it's not even that complicated. So take advantage of the knowledge that you now have reach out so we can help you resolve those workplace problems. But as John said, I always like to start with a scenario that came across my desk. And just to give you a sense of what I'm often dealing with, because you at some point may find yourself in that same situation. So I spoke with a lady who had uh, been on a layoff for a number of months, of course, because of COVID-19, like so many thousands and thousands of people across the country. Well, her employer finally called her back and said, we want to bring you back, but unfortunately, we're only going to be able to pay you 30%. Now, you're going to work 30% less. We're not going to make you work the same, but we're going to pay you 30% uh, less of what, what you're earning. Well, she said, well, I, I can't afford that. I'm not going to agree to that because I, it's already been a struggle for me being on, on uh, CERB and on EI. I need my full income. So uh, the company says, well, we'll think about it. The next day she gets an email saying, we accept your resignation. We told you to come back to work. You decided not to, so uh, you've resigned. Uh, no, no, no. There's so many things wrong there that's, that it's silly. Number one, the, the kind of the easy one, frankly, is the fact that the layoff itself was a termination. Remember, if you've been laid off temporarily, you can treat that as a termination then. You don't have to wait and see what happens. Right off the bat, if she wanted to, she could treat that layoff that happened a number of months ago as a termination. But beyond that, remember this, because we've spoken about this on the show, and we'll cover this again later today as well, your employer cannot make significant changes to terms of employment. So her employer saying to her, we're going to reduce your pay by 30%, she absolutely has no obligation to accept that. Why would she? Generally speaking, if we're looking at a change in pay of 10% or more, we're in what we call constructive dismissal territory. Constructive dismissal happens when your employer makes significant changes and you treat that as a termination. So she did not resign. Her employer terminated her employment because she wouldn't accept the employer doing something that the employer is not allowed to do. So if your employer does make significant changes to your employment, whether it's COVID-19 related or not, changes to pay, changes to hours, changes to your job responsibilities, you may have that choice to treat that as a constructive dismissal and get your severance. If you refuse, that's not a resignation. You cannot be disciplined for it, just like this person. Uh, and if you're ever in that situation, you want to know what to do. Maybe your employer is making threats saying, well, if you don't accept this, we're going to let you go. Let's talk about that. Before you respond, before you say I'm out of here, before you agree, certainly, let's have that discussion. You want to understand what your rights are and what to do about them. 
Well, uh, firstly, if, if she does agree, that now she's opened up the door for that employer to do that again. Could be another 30% or another 10% in six months, and she's going to be even more hot water, right? So bad enough, of course, to take a 30% pay cut. You know, most people cannot afford that. But yep. by allowing that to happen, you've opened that door a crack. But once the door is open a crack, it's very easy to open it all the way, meaning the next time your employer, as John said, wants to reduce your pay by another 10% or 20 or 30 or 50%, you may not be able to do anything about it because you let it happen that very first time. So that's why to stand up for your rights is important. And if you don't stand up for your rights one time, you may lose the ability to stand up for your rights at all. So please don't let that happen. You know, it's, it's funny. We've had phone calls on radio show about people who have accepted this 20, 25, 30% pay cut saying, you know, it didn't seem like something they couldn't do. But often for perspective, if you spin it around and you walk into your job tomorrow and say, you know what, employer, I feel like you're going to pay me 30% more starting today. They're going to look at you like, what? No. Yeah, it's exactly right. And what John said may sound absurd, and it is absurd because yeah. an employee can't just decide that they're going to get paid 30% more. That They can't decide that. Well, it's exactly the same the other way around. Your employer can't decide to reduce your pay by 30%. And the reason neither the employee nor the employer can do that is because they have an agreement. The agreement is I come into work, I do the following five tasks, and you pay me this amount of money. That is the deal. I can't change the deal as the employee, and the employer can't change the deal in the same way. So the deal is the deal, and if anyone wants to change it, they're actually not allowed to do that. EmploymentLawyer.ca, the website to go anytime. By the way, you'll catch links to our radio show as well. Take a ton of calls on the show. We play them back here. Phone call number one, Lior, is coming at you right now. I'm 69 years old at the moment. I was with the company for 10 years. I was off on medical benefits for six months, and then I did take some other time off because I really wasn't quite ready to go back. When I phoned to go back, they said they didn't expect me back and basically told me there was nothing available. Hmm. So certainly for this person, if he's on off on a medical leave, as long as his doctor backs him up and as long as his doctor gives him a note saying, he needs to be on a medical leave. He's allowed to be on a medical leave, whether it's one month, six months like he did, or even longer than that. That also means that he continues to be an employee. So he wants to come back to work. Company has to make all reasonable efforts to bring him back. If they don't want to, if they say, well, you know, you've been gone, so we've moved on, we don't want to bring you back, that's a human rights violation. That's illegal. You have to make the efforts to bring the person back. Now, if they try, if they say, okay, you want to come back, we want to have you back, so let us take a look. If they try, they look, they, they make all efforts, and there legitimately is no job for him, legitimately, then they can terminate him with severance. But number one, they have to try to find him a job. No matter what, they have to make the effort, same job, same pay. If that's not possible, if it le legitimately doesn't exist, not because of his medical condition, just because things have changed, then we're talking severance. And of course, the question then becomes, how much severance? So pocketemploymentlawyer.ca is, is our friend here that allows anyone to find out in seconds and for free how much severance is actually owed. So pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, let's take this person's information and let's uh, put that into the pocketemploymentlawyer.ca tool and see how much he's owed. So we know that he's 69 years old, let's say he's in a, a sales role and he's been with his employer for 10 years, what does he owe? You can see that on the screen, 14 to 16 months pay. Now for him, one of the reasons why it's this high, up to 16 months pay, because he's an older employee at 69 years of age, so that's why the severance is going to increase and it's going to be even more. It may have been less than that if he was younger. That's why it's important to go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. You may be surprised, in fact, you probably will be surprised when you use it and find out how much you're owed yourself. And the age being 69 is a big factor because, I mean, especially, you know, during COVID-19, the chance a guy that age with the competition and the education of the young workforce, him finding a gig in any less time than that's going to be really tough. Yeah, the reason why age is one of the three main factors that go into determining how much severance someone is owed is because the law assumes, right or wrong, that it's going to be harder you, for you to find a job the older you are. So at 69, it's going to be harder to find a job and it's going to take you longer than, let's say, if you were 39 years of age. And that if you're 79, it's going to be harder than if you're 69. So that's why age is a factor. The older you are, the more severance is owed. That doesn't mean that someone that's 29 doesn't get severance. Absolutely you get severance. In fact, you get a substantial amount of severance, but it does increase the older you are. 
Another place, another termination, uh, probably me, another website you can use, terminationquestions.com to ask your questions there. Lior, a member of his team, will answer them. We'll get to one for today, pal. First one's from Casey. Casey writes, says, I've been extremely anxious about the pandemic and asked my employer to let me work from home. While the office appears to be decently safe, I don't want to take my chances. Does the company have to agree to let me work from home if I request this? I live with my husband and his boss is letting him work from home. So that's a common question, John. It's a question that I've been getting, probably I've gotten hundreds of times, uh, if not more since yeah. COVID-19 started. So the answer is this, your employer does not have to allow you to work from home unless there's a medical condition where the doctor says you have to work from home. So if you don't have a medical condition, but you are feeling unsafe, many of us are, many of us don't wanna to go to the office, many of us don't wanna leave the house or take public transportation, be around a lot of people yeah. because of COVID-19. But despite that, your employer does not have to give you that time off work. Now, what your employer does have to do is follow all the guidelines of the health authorities in terms of limiting the number of people in the office, in terms of masks, in terms of social distancing. Your employer has to meet all those guidelines to make the workplace as safe as possible. If your workplace is not safe, if your employer is not doing what it's supposed to do, you are absolutely able to refuse to go to work. In fact, you can even get the government involved if you need to. But if your employer is doing what it's supposed to do and you still choose not to go to work, that is a concern. You may then be considered to have resigned. You may then get disqualified from getting any government benefits like EI or, or other benefits, and that's a problem. Now, an employer may allow you, may, may be understanding and say, that's fine, you can stay home and come back when you're ready. But you can't do that without speaking to your employer, and you can't do that without your employer's agreement. So speak to your employer, or if there is a medical condition, get a doctor's note, that will allow you to be off work. You know, it's interesting, though, with COVID-19, it's been months and months now. A lot of people, tens of thousands of people are working from home for that reason. Could that eventually become, you know, what you would refer to as an implied term of their contract? So like, hey, I've been off for seven months now. I don't want to go back employer because I've been home. This is the way this is the new reality or they they can't do that. So, so here's kind of what John's referring to. In a non-COVID-19 situation, if your employer allows you to work from home, and let's say you work from home full-time or even just a couple days a week, if that, your employer then changes its mind and say, now we've decided that you're not gonna work from home anymore, well, no, they can't change their mind. They didn't have to allow you to work from home to begin with, but once they did, it became a term of employment and they can't just change that. But that's a bit different with COVID-19. The, the reason why you're working from home is because this unexpected event, COVID-19, happened. So it's assumed that you're only going to be working from, from home while COVID-19 requires that to be the case. So if your employer does tell you to come back to work uh, during COVID-19, if you were working from the office before then, they are allowed to do that. But some employers are going to be understanding. You can work out an arrangement where you work from home, but don't do that without speaking with your employer. All right, quick break, and we'll come back to employment law, true or false. Leo, are in the hot seat. Well, for you, it's like medium warm. It's not that bad. But either way, I'm going to ask you the questions this time, so stick around for that. In the meantime, 1-855-821-5900 and pocketemploymentlawyer.ca as well. Coming right back. Don't go anywhere. You lost your job. They only gave you two weeks of severance per year worked. But where can you find out what you're really owed? I'm going to severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you're owed right now. SeverancePayCalculator.com You've been denied long-term disability. You think you're powerless, but you have a lot more power than you think. I'll tell you a secret. It's a numbers game for the insurance company. They're betting on you walking away from money that they owe you. Don't make that mistake. We resolve disability claims all the time. We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. Call Savan and his team, 1-855-821-5900, or go to disabilityrights.ca. You lost your job. They said they had a good reason, but you think you've been wrongfully dismissed. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. Welcome back, Employment Law Show, John Scholes and Lior Sanfiru. It is time for the Employment Law, True or False. Now, at the beginning of the show, Lior, we were kind of fighting who's going to ask who the questions. Am I going to get embarrassed or are you going to do it? And then I realized on my notes right here, in brackets beside each question, it says false, true, true, false. So I would have known the answers 
<laughs> anyway, so it doesn't make cheating. a difference. Cheating. cheating. Okay, we'll call it cheating. We'll talk to your producer after the show. But uh, you know this knowledge anyway, but it's for the viewers, so we'll, uh, we'll get right to it. First one, my employer doesn't owe me any severance because my employment contract has a termination clause. True or false? So before I even say if it's uh, true or yep. false, let's explain for those people that don't know what a termination clause is. Mm -hmm. A termination clause is a term in an employment agreement that tries to limit the amount of severance you would get if you're ever let go. Now, a lot of employers are starting to understand, well, wait a second, severance is a lot of money. It could be up to two years pay. How do we uh, eliminate that or how do we reduce it? And one of the ways to do that is to have an employee sign an employment agreement that limits future severance. Here's the good news. For most people, and probably in 85, 90% of the, the situations, that termination clause actually doesn't properly limit your entitlements. So that statement, therefore, is false. Your employer will absolutely, may well have to pay you your full severance despite you having signed a termination clause because, as I said, for most people, it's not enforceable. Now, that still doesn't mean you should go ahead and sign a termination clause because you don't want to have that dispute later on. But if you did sign a termination clause, let's say now you've just lost your job and your employer says, well, we only have to pay you six weeks pay because you signed this termination clause. Not so fast. That may mean nothing. You may still be owed your full severance, which could be five times that. So please make sure you get that advice, if, even if you signed a termination clause. All right, number two, the true or false. During the pandemic, an employer has the right to make significant changes to an employee's job. That is false. And a lot of people are going to be surprised by the fact that that is completely false. There's a lot of misleading information out there. But the rules that applied pre-COVID-19 continue to apply now. Your employer still does not have the right to make significant changes to the terms of employment. That means your employer can't reduce your pay, certainly not more than 10, 12 percent. Your employer cannot change your hours, your work location, your shifts, you know, take you from day to night, uh, your commission, eliminate that, or, or put you just on 100 percent commission. They cannot make these significant changes. If they do, that doesn't mean you can physically restrain them from doing it. What it means is that you have the right to treat that change as a constructive dismissal. It still continues to be the law. It still continues to be the case. That means you will not accept that and instead get your severance. So no, your employer cannot change terms of employment even if it's because of COVID-19. While we work our way through these, you might come up with some questions on your own. Feel free to reach out, 1-855-821-5900, help at employment lawyer. Dot CA, next question, Leo, the employment law, true or false is this. I was late for work and failed to finish a project on time. One more strike and my boss will have the right to fire me. Well, the, the answer here to that is maybe that's true. And, and the reason for that is your employer is allowed to build its case. Your employer is allowed to expect, first of all, proper performance from you uh, and, and for you to do your job. So if you didn't do a good job, if something was, uh, was you know, fall, fell through the cracks or you, you weren't uh, as careful as you should have, your employer should discipline you. They should provide you a warning. If it happens again, another warning. And then maybe if it happens again, maybe, maybe, they may be in a position to let you go for cause. So that could be true but number one the company would have to show that in fact you did something wrong just because they said you did something wrong that may not be the case number two they have to show that they've properly warned you okay and number three they have to show that it all happened in a fairly short period of time so if you did something wrong three years ago and now you did something else wrong that does not mean you you can be let go for cause we can almost forget about what happened that long ago so yes you can be let go for cause if you did something wrong a number of times if the company's documented this if the company's provided you proper warnings but there's a number of ifs there and in my experience it's rare for the company to do it correctly so the the end result may well be that even though you may have done something wrong that does not rise all the way to the level of cause, meaning if you are let go, you would still be owed your full severance. Today in the show, we're right in the middle of the employment law, true or false. So far, you're three for three, pal. I guess I'm not surprised, but you're doing well. <laughs> uh, the you. next one, next one is this. Number four is my employer doesn't have a right to know my diagnosis, I underline diagnosis, in order to approve a medical leave. That is completely true. I like the previous one where I said, well, it could be true, it could be not. Yeah. This is 100% true. So diagnosis, for those that are not sure what that is, that means your employer does not have the right to know what your condition is, what medical issues you have, what treatment you're getting, or what specialist you're seeing. That is personal, private information, and it's not relevant. If you're sick, the only thing that your employer needs to know, if they want to know, is whether you are able to work 
or not. That's it. Can I work or can I not? They may also know or have a right to know about what restrictions you have, whether you need accommodation. Absolutely, that's legitimate. In fact, that's important information for the employer to have. It does not matter, though, whether you have a broken back or a broken finger or you're suffering from depression. What matters is whether you're able to work. So an employer that asks you for personal and private information is overstepping. You can absolutely, in fact, you should refuse that. You cannot be punished for it. You cannot be disciplined. Your employer cannot refuse to give you medical time off from work. And if your employer does overreach and you think it's getting a bit uh, you know, uncomfortable, let's have a talk. I may be able to you know, get them off your back, but your employer can know your prognosis but not your diagnosis. So they can, they can well within the rights to find out when you think you're coming back, what uh, accommodations you'll need, all of that, right? All the things that the company should know in order to determine how they're gonna best bring you back to work. How long, uh, what, are the, you know, what are the odds, can you come back to your old job or a different job, legitimate. But why you're sick, what the condition is, inappropriate, they can't ask whether it's because of this condition or that condition, that's off bounds. Okay, employment law, true or false, last question. Oh, we're going to lob an easy one over the plate for you here, pal. Uh, the opportunity to pursue severance pay runs out after the employer's offer deadline. Well, the reason why we started doing this show is because this whole concept is false. It's absolutely false. That deadline, and every severance letter has a deadline. Mm -hmm. if, if you've ever been let go, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You get this paper, uh, document that's going to, you know, we call the severance package, and there, that's going to contain a deadline. It's going to say, well, we're going to offer you this amount of money, but you have to sign this and accept it by Friday, Monday, Thursday, whatever the date is. And there, of course, there's that, that pressure that you're feeling. You're feeling that anxiety. Well, I have to sign this. That deadline is expiring by tomorrow. My gosh, I, I better get, get to it. No, that deadline is meaningless. Your rights don't expire on that deadline or after that deadline. Your rights, in fact, don't expire for two years. That's why that deadline is there to be as a pressure tactic for you to forget about the fact that you have rights, to forget about how long you have to pursue it, and to feel that you have to deal with this right now. Most severance packages are completely inadequate. If you sign off on it because you're feeling the stress and the pressure of that deadline, you've given up your rights. Instead, let's have a chat, or even easier, grab your smartphone, grab your desktop, tablet, and simply go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Anytime you want to reach out and check out our uh, hour-long weekly radio show, employmentlawyer.ca is the place to find a station near you. We'll get to our second phone call from the radio show right now, Lior. My wife just recently started a new job, a very senior position, but she has a probation period about six months. Uh, she also just got pregnant, so we're expecting a, our, our first child. just wanted to know if she notified the employer within that six-month period, probation period, would they be able to terminate her based uh, on probation ground reasons because of her pregnancy? So this is a, a situation that may, may seem very awkward. Well, I'm, I'm on probation, but I found out I'm pregnant and then can my employer let me go is what his, uh, his wife is wondering. So you cannot, well, let's put it this way. Your employer cannot use probation as an excuse to let someone go because of their pregnancy. So if your employer says, aha, I know what to do. Instead of having to deal with this pregnancy leave, let's just remember that she's on probation and let's let her go that way. That doesn't work. That's still illegal. That's a human rights violation. That's a, a violation of the Employment Standards Act. It's wrong and it's illegal. Now, if your employer has legitimate reasons to let you go that have absolutely nothing to do with pregnancy, then yes, they can do that. But that's going to be virtually impossible for the employer to show. So no, your employer cannot let you go just because you're on, on uh, probation uh, when what the reason they're really letting you go is because of your pregnancy. Uh, that's something that's sacred in our laws across Canada. If you're pregnant, if you're taking a parental leave, if you're a father taking a parental leave, you cannot be let go for that. You cannot be disciplined. doesn't matter if you're on probation. And if your employer does try to do any of those things, yeah, there's certainly going to be significant legal consequences. Okay, Leo, let's take a short break. We've got a few more minutes to go, lots more to cover, so we'll get into it. In the meantime, 1 855 821 5900. Reaching out through email, help at employmentlawyer.ca as well. Come right back. You were being harassed, and when you said something about it, you're the one who lost your job. Now, what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. 
Insurance companies deny long-term disability claims all the time. They give lots of excuses. Don't give up. I've seen it all. They've ignored your doctors, they've ignored you. You're angry and you're frustrated. But there's hope. We resolve disability claims all the time. We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. Call Savannah and his team, 1-855-821-5900 or go to disabilityrights.ca. You thought you had a secure job. You didn't see it coming. Now what do you do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And yeah, welcome back, Employment Law Show. A few minutes to go here. As mentioned, employmentlawyer.ca is the website you can go to to catch our radio show and a station near you. Feel free when you're listening to phone into those radio shows as well. We take all kinds of calls. Leorne, we'll get to our third call from the radio shows here now. I'm uh, 54. I was let go last week from a manager's role. I had been with this particular company for three years. However, I was hired by this company based on my 30 years in the industry. My department hit target every year, and then new director was appointed. He and I have a personality conflict. As a result, I was let go. Hmm. So remember that despite the fact that this may sound unfair, his employer does have a right to let him go for having a personality conflict or for any reason, really, so long as they pay severance. So that's really the issue here. It's an issue of severance. Now, he cannot be let go for cause just because there's a personality conflict. That doesn't mean he can be let go without severance. The only time you can be let go without severance is if you've done something terrible, something horrible, something that's so bad that it makes it impossible to continue employing you. Now, if he started yelling profanities and threats at his boss, yeah, that may be cause. You can't really continue working in that situation. But if the boss and him don't get along, I can see the boss saying, you know what, I'm going to let you go. That's fine. But full severance still has to be paid. No question about it. So we know that this person has been there for three years. Let's go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca to find out exactly how much he's actually owed. You could do the same thing for your situation. So let's go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Uh, we know that this person has been there for three years. He's a manager. Uh, he's 54 years old. It's kind of a, a, yeah, it's a nice number that I picked. We see that he's owed right around six months' pay. Okay, Six months' pay is what it would cost the company to let him go, even if there's a personality conflict, even if there's a conflict, an issue, a, a disagreement with the boss. It's not something that allows the company to let him go without severance. Now, I've seen this so many times, John. Companies try to let an employee go for cause uh, when there really isn't cause. That's a very common situation. And by the way, we mentioned pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. One of the other things that, that tool does, it allows you to find out, in fact, if the company has cause to let you go. So check it out for yourself. It's like having your own lawyer with you at all times. Just before we go in a minute, Lior, he mentioned that he was hired based on his 30 years experience. That's different than being induced from a 30-year previous job, right? Correct. So your, your time in the industry doesn't necessarily count unless you were recruited away from another job. So if he had worked somewhere for 30 years, the company knocked on his door and says, hey, we want you to come work for us. They convinced him to come take a job, and then they let him go. They may have to account for the time he had with the previous company when it comes to his severance. But if he applied for a job and he decided to take the job, the fact that he had other 30 years or 30 or 40 years, what have you, in the industry does not actually count towards his seniority, which means his severance is not going to be affected by that period of time. All right, just about done for another day. I want to reach out to Lior and the crew. Several different ways you could do that. We've talked about pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. There's also a wealth of employment law information on there. Absolutely free, absolutely anonymous. There is a contact button at the top right. Phone number always works, 1-855-821-5900 and employmentlawyer.ca. We'll catch you next time, Employment Law Show. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you are owed right now. severancepaycalculator.com.